Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to talk about this, Warhammer Plus. So we now know what you're going to get with Warhammer Plus, and you remember when we talked about this before, I was... I was sceptical. I was somewhat sceptical because on the surface of it, when it just seemed like animation plus some other things for an undisclosed price, it was kind of hard to see how it would compete with other services offering similar things. Which, in retrospect, given the similar things were just animations, it didn't look like it could possibly be good value unless it was incredibly cheap. But of course, that's not what they've done with it. They've done something totally different. It's not a streaming service necessarily. It kind of is, but it also isn't. There's a whole bunch of stuff lumped into, actually, dare I say it, quite a good monthly price. Like, cheaper than I was expecting it to be, no matter what they ended up putting in here. So let's just go into it. Let's just go into it, because I, this actually looks really good. Like, this genuinely looks good. And I, I you know I was sceptical before, so I'm this is one of those occasions, I'm really happy to be wrong. I like being wrong when it's like a positive wrong. That's, it's good. So, with a Warhammer Plus subscription, you get a wealth of Warhammer animation, weekly in-house Warhammer hobby shows, a digital vault of classic Warhammer publications and White Dwarf issues. That, by the way, I love that. I absolutely love that. Like, like a, a vault full of all of the, like all of the old White Dwarfs and stuff. I want to go back and read the white dwarfs that were that were released in like the year I started the hobby. I want to see like high res scans and pictures and PDFs and stuff of like of like tanks like tanks orc army. The one that was like made with loads of crazy toys and stuff. Because I remember that and I love that. There's a video about it on this channel. I want to go back and see that in glorious close-up detail. That by itself, I really like the idea of that. I'll be totally honest. I like the idea of being able to go back through all the old white dwarfs and like some of the older like publications and stuff almost more than the animations if I'm totally honest with you. So that's kind of sold me. Full access to Warhammer apps, that's Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Age of Sigma with more to come. Now interestingly they didn't name the current app for Warhammer Age of Sigma. This I believe is one that is like in development. It's going to replace the one they currently have or at least that's the impression I got. Could have been mistaken with that but I think that's what that is. Premium access to our official events. I can see why they've done it. I'm not a huge fan of that angle, personally, but that I'm not surprised at all. Uh, exclusive sub subscriber offers. I mean, that makes sense. I, that would be expected. A free exclusive Citadel miniature worth at least £25 every year and access to a second exclusive subscriber miniature. So it launches on the 25th of August and is £4.99, or $5.99 a month. That's that's a decent price. Like, that's genuinely a decent price. When you're talking, like, access to the Warhammer app, like the 40k app and the Age of Sigmar app, given that the Warhammer 40k app is currently $1.99, having access to both of those for, for $4.99 plus everything else, that is a decent price to me. I am pleasantly surprised at how they've done that. I really would have expected it to be more especially if they're throwing in access to the two like the two official applications they've got. Now there are more specifics as we go through. So we've got the exclusive miniatures, one of which is a really quite nice Vindicare Assassin right there. That's that's cool. That's a cool model. I mean the Assassin is an Assassin. Vindicares just look like that. That's nothing particularly special. But but I really like the framing of this. The position that they're standing in, the fact you've got this kind of ruined statue as as part of the base. It's it's a very uh, it's a very like it feels very centerpiece. This feels more like a display model than like a, than an actual like playable one. I mean, you could play. I don't see why not. But they're on a bit of an elevation, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a height disadvantage. If anything, I really like the overall idea of this though. This looks really cool. This is a this is a this is a fun model with a fun base um, and a massive orc, which wasn't there in. Was it was it Grim Grimgore Ironhide look kind of similar to this? I think. Still, it looks cool. He's got a metal river eye patch. Can't complain about that. Big old yeah, big old war boss with a massive axe. I like it. I do like it. How could I not? It's it's an orc with some girth, some massive armor, horns, and a giant axe. What more could you ask for from an orc? So you get one of them free, and then you have the option to buy the other one if you want. I can see, genuinely, quite a few people subscribing just for one of the free models. Seriously, I can see that happening quite easily. 
So animations wise, we've we've already seen a bunch of this stuff for animation. Um, so there's like Angel of Death and Hammer and Bolter, and I think there's like is there nine more? I think overall, loads of different loads of different uh, shows coming out for that. Which obviously is like it's the thing they've led with for this, but in a weird way, I almost feel like the animations are. I mean, they are like. They're the thing that we used for publicity for Warhammer Plus. They were the things that were kind of like this. This is the service on which you can see these shows. But honestly, with the list of features now out, I think there's going to be a good number of people who are going to look at things like the apps and the models, and like the the older publications as being as important, if not more of a draw, than the animations themselves. But yeah, I mean, they're still there. It's just weirdly, they don't feel as important to what this is now that we have the full list of features, at least to me. I'm aware that I could be very much in the minority in that particular viewpoint, and it's fine. We all like different stuff, don't we? So uh, new animations are set to arrive almost every Wednesday. I mean, is that just until the end of time? How many more people are they planning to bring over from YouTube to make enough animation to go every single Wednesday? I mean, if they're like, I mean, if they're a starty style, like two to three minute long things, uh, yeah, maybe. Chop them up a bit. Please don't do that. Please don't like disrupt the natural flow of whatever it is to make sure that there's one almost every Wednesday. I would hope that they wouldn't do that. There's also the uh, the exclusive shows. So. The Warhammer TV team have been hard at work on a brand new selection of shows covering every side of the hobby. So we've got Citadel Color Masterclass. So there's already like basic painting that you can learn from the Warhammer TV channel. And it looks like now they are expanding that out to be, well, more of a more advanced techniques. Which honestly I really like the idea of. In a way, it's a shame that it's locked behind a locked behind that paywall. Because I think Honestly, there is there is a lot of scope for like an official Games Workshop painting guide that starts with the basics and leads all the way up to like a full on masterclass that is freely available because that surely means that people getting involved in the hobby, if they only really know of Games Workshop, that means that they've got like they they've got from like step one to the final step of being like a golden demon winner or whatever, like right right there. They don't have to go elsewhere. That being said, there's plenty of alternatives that you can find for free, and I suppose if you are if you're really out there to learn like like the heavy metal style of painting, it's gonna be the best place to go to get that kind of thing. I would have thought. So I can understand why they put it behind the uh, behind the paywall. Be kind of nice if it was more freely available. And to be honest, a good way to advertise it would be to put the occasional one up for free just to draw people in. Because as long as they're high quality and they they like have good enough actual painting advice if they teach well enough there's i mean there's already painting courses that cost you know it's not like it's not like games workshop is the only company or person to offer kind of more courses or more advanced courses for money that's something that's been around for god knows how long but yeah it'd be nice to kind of get people in and get more eyes on that because i'm sure there'll be a lot of people who see what's on the box and want to paint it like it's on the box then again I can just I can totally see why they put it behind that paywall. So along with that, there's also the Warhammer Lore Masters, which is which is interesting. Okay, so this one this one I'm in kind of two minds about. I really like the idea of it. So ever wish you could delve into the archives of the Warhammer Studio itself and have the history of the 41st Millennium and Mortal Realms at your fingertips. If that's a yes, you're going to love Lore Masters. So it's the official Warhammer lore show presented by experts. Each episode dives into the rich world of Warhammer and lifts the lid on the iconic characters, locations, and events that have defined Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigmar from the beginning. Now, there was a little, there was a little mention, there was a little word in the actual stream that I wasn't a fan of. Because, I can't remember who said it, but it was like genuine, genuine lore masters. Which kind of felt a little bit like throwing shade at the multiple very good lore channels that currently exist outside of Games Workshop. I don't think that's what it was intended at. And in fact, I think probably it was meant to be a, a seal of approval thing. It's like, well, you know, we have the actual experts here because they work here and they have access to all of our stuff and, you know, things that maybe other people don't know about and all that stuff. But it did almost feel like a little bit of a dig. I don't think it was meant that way. But it's, yeah, I don't know. It just stuck out as like a strange a strange comment to make. 
I like the idea of this. What I would really like from this is to do something that isn't available elsewhere. Frankly, right now, we have... There are so many good lore channels. There are so many good lore channels. Off the top of my head, if I'm going to sit down and I'm going to paint and I'm going to listen to some lore videos, I mean, Lutin, Baltimore, Oculus Imperia, those are the three that immediately like spring to mind. 40k theories. There are plenty of very good... If you want more of a comedic slant, Major Kill, there are plenty of very, very good lore channels out there, right? And they all do something slightly different. They have different narration styles, different writing styles, the scripts are different. No, like Oculus Imperia is like in-universe narration. There are so many of those who do a fantastic job and present you with with the law. I don't feel like just putting that product but behind a paywall is necessarily going to be worth the effort. What I would really like to see from from like law masters from like the official Warhammer Law Show isn't just the story of the characters because frankly. That's been covered. There is a massive, you know, there's the lexiconum, there's the there's the uh, war Warhammer like forty um, k Wikipedia page or whatever. There's there's multiple different resources of that. You've got all the different all the different lore channels. You can search for like Abaddon the Despoiler and find uh, like a hundred videos, all telling you about Abaddon the Destroyer. For this to have its like unique selling point and to do something different from those and to be to mark itself out as its own thing and not just, hey, we're doing what the community does. Look at us. I want to know what the designers behind them think. I don't just want this is the character. When it says lifts the lid on iconic characters, lo locations and events that are defined 40k and Age of Sigmar, I want the people who wrote that stuff to give personal perspective on it. I want the people who came up with that lore, who came up with those characters, who came up with the battles, locations, the, the events themselves... I want the people responsible for that law to talk about it in terms of how they wrote it, why they wrote it the way they did, what considerations they had going in, what they were influenced by. That would be something 100% worth watching every single time. Now, if they do that, I'm 100% in on Lawmasters. I am 100% in. I would also say as well, I've already seen a few concerns um, on Twitter uh, of like people saying, well, this, this like bodes pretty poorly for law channels because if they've got their own law show why would they maybe they'll shut everyone else down that that is a concern i would hope that games workshop is is more i mean more sensible and more intelligent than that i'm just going to say it like it, the amount of the amount of backlash the amount of bad will and absolute i mean literal hate that would come from shutting down people who have, you know, been making high quality law videos for, you know, for years, who have become, you know, staples of the community, who have become like the go to for learning about 40k Rage of Sigma. Shutting them down and going, hey, pay us five quid for a fraction of the content, but not presented by the people that you clearly love, that would be a disastrous move. That would be a guaranteed way to piss off a significant number of people instantly. I don't think they would do that. I would really hope that that's not even a consideration. That what they're going to do is take the format and put their own spin on it, make it so that it is something different to what other people offer, rather than just going, well, we make this now so you can all get lost. I really, really hope that... I really hope that they don't do that. I hope that they actually make it their own and don't just try and, like, muscle everyone else out. In a similar note, we've also got battle reports as well. So, Age of Sigmar battle reports and 40k battle reports. Again, if they are if they are well-produced, if the people playing them are fun and engaging, then go for it. Once again, I would hope against hope that they don't take... They don't decide that this is, like, the way to get rid of all those other pesky battle report channels. Again, I think that would be a massive mistake, and I would lose a lot of respect if that was if that was what happened. But again, they have an opportunity to do something that other people don't do. They have an opportunity to make their own version of this, whereby they have, you know, they they can provide a, a unique perspective on 
on things happening in battle reports that maybe other people can't and i hope that that's what they're embracing with this and what's that's what they're going for you know things like bringing back like the uh the streamed community battles and stuff they are already kind of putting their own kind of fun spin on it because they have they have i would argue the capability of producing battle reports that no one else can when it comes to sheer quantity of models and sheer size of battle you know they they have the resources to produce gigantic gaming tables and they have i would assume the budget to be able to get a decent number of cameras up and pitch absolutely massive armies against each other and uh, they have said here, ever wonder what the Crimson Fist last stand on Rin's world or the battle surrounding the Alariel's right of life would look like fought out in glorious miniature form? Yes, I have wondered that. There are plenty of battles where I've sat there and gone, man, reading this, I don't know how you would actually play this, like really play this battle to scale, but uh, it would be amazing if you could. They could. They could do that. Now, would I want to see the Siege of Terror every single week on every Battle Report channel? No, probably not. That would be a bit overload. As it stands, there's a really nice mix of different styles of Battle Report from lots of different channels, 99% of them featuring, you know, really nice really nice tables, really nicely painted armies, a nice mix of narrative and, uh, and competitive play, but no one is sitting there and going, okay, let's, uh, let's do the Siege of Terror. Let's, let's do a battle from that. Let's have, you know... A massive, massive fight and turn it into a full-on battle report. I well, I say that maybe someone has done that and I've missed it. But if anyone is in the position to do that on any sort of large scale, then it's Games Workshop. And so again, it's if they're bringing their own kind of flair and their own approach to it, then yeah, go for it. Just let other people carry on doing it too. That's all I ask. So, of course, you also get access to the apps as well. So, the Warhammer 40k app, which, in, in fairness, in fairness to them, I will say the 40k app is way better than it was. It's way better than it was. It stopped deleting my army list, which is nice. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, the fact that it kept doing that even after it came out of beta is a little bit bad. But it seems to be it seems to be mostly, uh, mostly okay now. Um, hopefully, they've got you know, plans to just keep improving it endlessly. That would be nice. Um, we're also building a brand new companion app for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Yes, I was correct. Good. I did hear them properly. That's nice. So our subscribers will get immediate premium tier access. So yeah, I mean, both of those, both of those, if you assume the same pricing system for both, which I guess they will go for the same pricing system for both, you got $1.99 for the, 40, for the 40k app, which means it'll be $1.99 for the Age of Sigmar app. That ed, that's about four quid, so all of Warhammer Plus is five quid. I mean, for all the extra stuff, for all the extra stuff, feels worth it, you know? Plus, I do like this. Already a Warhammer 40k app subscriber, as a way of saying thanks, if you upgrade your subscription into Warhammer Plus sub in the first month after its launch, you'll get your exclusive free model after nine months rather than 12. That's three months earlier than everyone else. So, for putting up with all the nonsense, here's, a, here's, here's, your, th here's your free thing early. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I've, I've, I've had that thing subbed for quite a while now. I'm not really sure why, but I have. And just to, because they can't help themselves, because they can't. Even better, as an existing Warhammer 40k app subscriber, if you take out a full year subscription, you'll receive an additional free gift too. F okay, fine, sure. Now this I'm genuinely quite excited by. Um, so one of the parts of Warhammer Plus we're most excited about is the Warhammer Vault, and as the name suggests, it's a veritable tre treasure trove of content from the history of Warhammer. So there's lore sections from past publications, at launch you find titles such as Gathering Storm and Sanctus Reach. So yeah, older publications and the like. What I'm, may well, I mean, what I'm mostly looking forward to is is White Dwarf being on there. I mean, it says with the entire back catalogue from 2020 available at launch. I would really hope that they go they go back further than that. White Dwarf has been around for a long time. So having the back catalogue from 2020 is nice, but you know what would be even nicer? Going going back, back, going way back. There are many of us, I'm sure, who like that kind of nostalgia hit you get when you see something from when you were a lot, a lot younger, and there are so many White Dwarfs that I can vaguely remember that I don't really know where to look for. And you know what? If they... If they if they threw those in, I would be real happy about it. I'd be real happy about it. There's also the event extra stuff, which is yeah fine. If you if you want to attend the official events, then you'll get 
you'll get like a, a little perk like a vip badge don't i, I don't know if i'd wear it depends what it looks like um priority access and free merch so yeah you you can that's a nice little bonus i guess not something that's particularly that i'm that, I'm that bothered by and finally the about your subscription thing is just you get access to everything above as part of the subscription for 4.99 a month if you're paying in in squids uh, or 5.99 if you're paying in dollars so i mean again there's a decent price for what you get for what you get Honestly, I think that's a good price. I really do. I genuinely do. Um, it's 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 a weird like it's a weird kind of mix of stuff. It's like a mishmash of of different ideas and different approaches to things. And there's like you know like the subscriptions to apps are also part of the thing that's part of animation. But also there's like shows and tutorials as well as old magazines and the like. It's quite a it's an eclectic mix of things. But it's all it's all stuff that is that holds some interest to at least someone you know it, it, i don't think there's anything in there outside the event extras which i'm just not bothered about there is stuff in there i think anyone who likes warhammer can get some enjoyment out of i was skeptical i was massively skeptical and i've gone from thinking there's no way this can be worth it to thinking actually actually i i would happily pay for this I would and probably will happily pay for this. Like, I already use the 40k app, mostly because I'm already paying for it, so why not? Um, I would use the uh, the current, like, Age of Sigmar app, and if there's a new one that is a bit more up-to-date, that that's with a better interface, because Jesus Christ, that would also be nice. Things like the, uh, like, things like the animation, almost a bonus, given that I'm kind of more interested to see massive battle reports and things and uh, like the warhammer vault is of particular interest to me so yeah i mean overall overall i think this looks pretty damn good this looks pretty damn good especially considering i went in thinking there's no way they could make this look worth whatever they're asking which is a really harsh attitude to take i realize but the original pitch just didn't give any indication as to what this would be and in a way, I still think that was a mistake because there was a lot of negativity to which I contributed. Frankly, I know I did, um, but now, now I'm, I'm mostly seeing just positive things. Just positive things. Just as long as you leave my law channels and my battle report channels alone, we're good, grand, love it. Keep going, do more cool stuff. Just you know, don't mess with the stuff that already exists because that's, that's no, not on, not on that. Question is, what do you think? Are you interested in this? Do you think it sounds good? Are you not too bothered? Have they actually surprised you by making it something that you would indeed pay for? Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon videos, regard that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you'd like. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.